Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, while he is Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is indeed Shadeedul Iqab. He is the one who gives and inflicts the most painful punishment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, various places, he talks about Jannah, but he talks about Jahannam. It is mentioned in the Hadith Qudsi that his Rahmah and mercy trumps and it overpowers his anger and his Ghadab. But there is no doubt in the reality that there is something called the Ghadab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is interesting that you find people till today that they will commit sins and sins and sins and in order to make them feel self good they will say oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ghafur rahim we remind ourselves that in surah al-hadid Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the munafiqun and he says about these people that there were four steps that they took in order to land themselves in the fire jahannam and one of the very first one was walakinnakum fatantum anfusakum then the next step was watarabbastum and then the third step was wartabatum and then the fourth step was الأماني. There are people, there are times when we go so deep into a sin, leaving that sin becomes so difficult. And at that time, the best way to console ourselves is, Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Ghafur Rahim. Yes, He is indeed Ghafur Rahim, but He is also the one who will inflict a pain and a punishment upon people. What are some of the things that we should stay away from that will incur Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wrath that is mentioned in the Quran? The first one is, they are mentioned in Surah Al-Fatiha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says غير المغضوب عليهم now often you will see in many books or many translations of the Quran, it will be written over there, those who are the Yahud. That does not necessarily mean that every single Yahud is al maghdubi alayhim. There could be other people who are not Yahud who are al maghdubi alayhim. But the question is that why is it that the Yahud were referred to as al maghdubi alayhim? Those who incurred Allah's anger. The reason is they had the knowledge, but they did not have the action. They had their ilm, but they did not have amal. They knew what was the Haq, but they chose not to follow the Haq. And not only that, but when Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came with the message from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, because of the fact that he came from the lineage of Ismail Alaihi Salaam, and Bani Israel came from the lineage of Ishaq Alaihi Salaam, they outright rejected the message of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Though they know, and by the way, it is mentioned in the books of Sirah, that the reason why they were in Medina to begin with is because based on their own teachings, they knew that the final Prophet will come here. But just because he was from the lineage of Ismail, they rejected the message of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is why Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala referred to them as al maghdubi Alayhim. Those who know what is right, but they choose not to follow it. Now, this is not only for them. Think about even for us. Wallahi, many of us, when we do something that is wrong, we know that this is wrong. That is al maghdubi alayhim. Because you have the knowledge. We know what's right and what's wrong, but we choose to do still what is wrong. How many times in family matters or community matters, we take the side of those who are doing wrong. Why? Because they might be from our family, for example. But I know what I'm doing is not right, but because they are my family, I have to give them preference over Allah and His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is al maghdubi alayhim. Why? Because we know what's right, yet we choose to reject the truth. The next group of people upon whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have his anger and his wrath upon are those who stay away from ibadat. Now, let me explain this way. Many of the ulama, they say that one of the signs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is upset with you, he does not take away things from you in life. Every single person, Muslim, Kafir, they all are inhaling, exhaling. Everyone Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has fed. Ibrahim alayhi salam, when he says that do not give those who do not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, no. Qala wa man kafara even those who don't believe in Allah, I will give them. But the ulama, they say that one of the signs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is upset with you is that he takes away the tawfiq. He takes away the opportunities to do good. You know how many people, they have the time, they have the money, they have the opportunity to go for Umrah. Allah does not give them the tawfiq. How many times we're sitting at home, we know it's time for Salat. Salat time is going, it's going, it's going and it's gone. That's a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is upset. He's taking away the tawfiq from you to pray Salat. That in itself is an alarming sign. Whenever we know that we can do something and we're still not doing it because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perhaps upset with us. The third thing that Allah 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala despises or he's angry with these kind of people are those who have pride and arrogance in their heart. Why? Because this is only and only a right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, I have a nice car. Alhamdulillah, I have a nice beautiful home. And you are proud about it. That's not the problem. The problem is arrogance. Arrogance is, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has described, Baqarul Haqqi wa Ghamtul Nas. It is judgment. To judge someone is only and only the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alayhi bi ahkam al hakimin. There is no one who can judge someone else. The only one who can judge is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And not only that, but the second definition of arrogance is to suppress the truth. Meaning that you suppress the truth and you replace that with your own truth. Which is almost a one-way legislation. Legislation is only and only the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when people are arrogant, you are taking away the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are trying to say that whatever rights belong to Allah, I also have those same rights. So that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very clearly in the Quran, He says, in Allah la yuhibbul mutakabbirin. Fourth are those people who commit oppression against themselves, meaning those who are indulged in sins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا فَأُعَذِّبُهُمْ عَذَابًا شَدِيدًا فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ وَمَا لَهُمْ مِنْ نَاصِرِينَ Those who did wrong and they were ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they did kufr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says He will inflict a painful punishment upon them and they will not have any wali in the hereafter. Here you're going to have a wali. You will have people to back you up and even subhanAllah till today when you see politicians doing things that are completely wrong. You know why they get away? Because they have what? They have a wali, right? They have other politicians who are going to back them up. So in this dunya, you have everyone to back you up even when you do something that is wrong. In the hereafter, they don't have any wali in the hereafter. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ However, those who do righteous deeds, فَيُوَفِّيهِمْ أُجُورَهُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them a great reward, a full reward. وَاللَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الظَّالِمِينَ Allah makes it very clear in the Quran, Allah does not like those who commit dhulm. Now of course, dhulm could mean doing dhulm against someone else. Here many of the ulama, they say that this dhulm here is in reference to yourself. Number five, extravagance. Our deen has taught us to always be moderate when it comes to spending. Do not be so stingy that you don't want to spend, you don't want to give. Do not be extravagant because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah la yuhibbul musrifeen. Allah does not like those who are extravagant. Number six, treachery and betrayal. To betray someone, to lie to someone when it comes to financial transactions, when it comes to promises and so forth, even when it comes to secrets. There are times when we betray others. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah la yuhibbul khainin. When someone gives you an amana, you take care of that amana. Number seven, exposing your own sins. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he mentions that one of the most despised people to Allah subhanahu wa taala are those who expose their own sins, and it's called a mujahid. These are the people who commit sins, and Allah covers up their sins. But these are the same people who go out and they will expose their sins, and they're proud over their sins. These are one of the people who are the most despised to Allah subhanahu wa taala. And finally, number eight are those those who commit shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, we can talk about shirk on a greater scale, the major shirk, which is are those who worship others besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then you have the shirk al khafi. Shirk al khafi is riya, doing something to please someone else rather than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're giving sadaqah, not so that you can please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but rather you can have other people say, what a generous person this brother was or this sister was. You're volunteering or you're doing something that is good. Why? Not to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not to serve his makhluq, but rather to have people praise you for what you are doing. This is known as shirk al khafi. So these are also a group of people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala despises. These are eight things that we must all stay away from in order to protect ourselves from the wrath of Allah, from the ghadab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if we are amongst those who have earned his ghadab, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replace that with his rahmah and his mercy. 